In the heart of an ancient forest, where even the sun dared not tread, lay the forgotten village of Arvin. The villagers spoke of the place in hushed whispers, for it was said that the forest was alive, a living entity that feasted on fear and despair. Legends told of a primordial entity known as the Corrupter, a being who thrived on the suffering of others and was bound to the forest by an ancient curse. As the legend went, anyone who ventured too deep into the woods would become part of the Corrupter's dark symphony, forever trapped between life and death. On a fateful night, a scholar named Alara, driven by an insatiable curiosity and an insidious skepticism, ventured into Arvin's forest. She had heard rumors of a cursed relic buried deep within, a dark artifact rumored to be the source of the Corrupter's power. Armed with only her wits and a lantern, she ignored the villagers' warnings and crossed the threshold into the forest's oppressive gloom. The forest welcomed Alara with a disconcerting silence, broken only by the occasional rustle of unseen creatures. As she progressed deeper, the trees seemed to close in around her, their gnarled branches twisting into grotesque shapes, their leaves whispering dark secrets. The very ground beneath her seemed alive, shifting and breathing, making each step a struggle against an unseen force. Hours turned into days, and Alara's sense of time grew distorted. She began to hear distant, mournful cries, as if the forest was weeping for lost souls. Her lantern flickered sporadically, casting eerie shadows that danced menacingly. Every corner she turned seemed to lead her deeper into a labyrinth of despair, as if the forest itself was conspiring to keep her there. In her exhaustion, Alara stumbled upon an ancient altar, overgrown with vines and bathed in a sickly greenish light. At its center lay the relic, a twisted blackened shard of what once might have been a beautiful crystal. The air around it crackled with malevolence, and Alara felt a cold dread seep into her bones. As she reached out to touch it, the shadows around her twisted into grotesque shapes, and the air grew thick with an oppressive darkness. The moment her fingers brushed the relic, a powerful force erupted from it, engulfing the forest in a wave of darkness. The trees writhed and twisted, their branches now like skeletal fingers reaching out for her. The cries she had heard before grew louder and more agonized, and from the shadows emerged the corrupter itself, a formless, shifting mass of agony and despair, with eyes that burned like molten fire. Alara tried to run, but the forest had transformed into a nightmarish maze, each path leading her back to the altar. Her lantern went out, plunging her into complete darkness. The corruptor's presence was overwhelming, a suffocating weight that pressed against her chest, making each breath a laborious effort. The very air seemed to vibrate with a terrible, mournful wail that spoke of countless souls condemned to eternal torment. Desperation drove Alara to confront the Corrupter. She screamed defiance into the darkness, her voice swallowed by the all-encompassing void. The Corrupter responded with a bone-chilling silence, and for a moment, Alara thought it had retreated. But then, the ground beneath her gave way, and she fell into an abyss of swirling shadows. She landed in a cavernous space filled with the echoes of a thousand screams. The walls were lined with the faces of those who had come before her, their eyes wide with terror and mouths open in silent screams. The corruptor's laughter reverberated through the cavern, a cruel reminder of the fate that awaited her. As Alara's own scream joined the chorus of anguish, she realized the truth. There was no escape. She had become part of the corruptor's dark collection, her soul bound to the forest's malevolent will. When the villagers of Arvin ventured into the forest to search for Alara, they never returned. The forest remained as it always had, an impenetrable shroud of darkness, a place where the corruptor's hunger for suffering continued to grow. The legend of Alara's fate became another chapter in the mythos of Arvin, a warning to those who dared to challenge the ancient darkness lurking within the forest's heart. Years passed, and the village of Arvin became a shadow of its former self. Whispers of the forest's malignancy grew, and few dared to approach its borders. Those who ventured close would speak of an oppressive fog that clung to their skin and the unshakable feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. The forest seemed to pulse with a dark rhythm, as if the corruptor's malevolent energy had seeped into the very soil, spreading dread to the village's edge. One bitter winter's night, a stranger arrived at Arvin, cloaked in a dark, tattered robe 
and carrying a bundle that seemed to writhe with an otherworldly energy. His name was Salus, a dark sorcerer who had heard of the Corruptor's curse and sought to challenge it. His motives were shrouded in mystery. Some said he was seeking redemption, while others whispered of darker ambitions. The villagers, desperate and frightened, saw in him a glimmer of hope, and they agreed to guide him to the forest's heart. With grim determination, Salus led a small group of villagers into the forest. As they ventured deeper, the forest seemed to sense their approach, and the air grew colder, heavier. The trees twisted into grotesque shapes, and the cries of the damned became a relentless cacophony. Salus moved with purpose, holding aloft an ancient staff inscribed with runes and chanting incantations that resonated through the darkness. Hours turned into days, and the forest's grip tightened around them. The villagers began to falter under the strain, their courage waning as the darkness seemed to grow ever more oppressive. Salus, however, pressed on, his eyes locked onto an uncharted path that seemed to pulse with a faint, eerie light. It was as though the forest itself was guiding him, or perhaps leading him into a trap. The path led them to the same altar where Alara had encountered the Corruptor. The relic still lay there, blackened and twisted. Salus approached with a mixture of reverence and defiance, placing his bundle upon the altar. With a series of intricate gestures and chants, he began to weave a powerful spell meant to contain and banish the Corruptor. The air crackled with arcane energy, and a barrier of shimmering light began to form around the altar. The Corruptor's laughter filled the forest once more, a sound that seemed to reverberate from every shadow. The entity emerged, its form more distinct than before, an amalgamation of the forest's torment and despair, with eyes that burned like molten lava. As Salus's spell reached its climax, the Corruptor lashed out, its tendrils of darkness attempting to shatter the barrier. A fierce battle ensued, with Salus wielding his magic against the Corruptor's relentless assault. The forest itself seemed to react, the trees groaning and shifting as if in sympathy with the entity. The villagers, paralyzed with fear, watched in horror as the struggle reached its zenith. Salus's incantations grew desperate, his power waning as the Corruptor's influence threatened to overwhelm him. In a final, desperate move, Salus drew upon all his remaining strength and channeled the energy of the relic itself, hoping to turn its dark power against the Corruptor. A blinding flash of light erupted from the altar, and the ground shook violently. The Corruptor's howl of rage was cut short as it was pulled into the void created by the relic's unleashed energy. When the light faded, the forest was eerily silent. The trees stood still, as if holding their breath, and the cries of the damned had ceased. The altar was empty, the relic vanished. Salus lay unconscious upon the altar, his spell having exacted a heavy toll. The villagers, though exhausted and traumatized, managed to drag him back to the village, leaving the forest's dark heart behind. Arvin slowly recovered, but the scars of their ordeal remained. The forest, though quieter, was now a place of haunted memories and lingering dread. Salus never spoke of his ordeal and eventually vanished from the village, leaving only the tale of his sacrifice and the lingering question of whether the Corruptor was truly gone or merely waiting for the right moment to rise again. The village continued to live in the shadow of their dark history, ever wary of the ancient forest that still held its secrets close. Thank you for joining us on this journey through legend and lore. Subscribe for more mythical tales and epic legends.